When I say the word testosterone, what comes to mind? You do what you're told. Come over here and make me a pipsqueak. Whatever you say. <laughs> it's a fact that men's testosterone levels have been declining for decades. Conventions and be dorks. I will not have nerds as children. I refuse to have a nerd carry the lame tape. If my son is a nerd, one of us has to die, him or me, and I'll challenge him to mortal combat. Jesus Christ. That's why genitals, I don't care if you're black or white, are a third the size they were of a 1960s male. Lots of people online have a variety of ideas on this, and by extension, being a man. From influencers on social media and television. He is as strong, really, as its citizens. And I think that mental and physical health go hand in hand. There is nothing, uh, I think, uh, more unfortunate than to have a uh, soft, chubby, fat-looking children. There's been a 50% decline in sperm counts in uh, the last 40 years, along with a precipitous decline in testosterone production. We're at it for a calamity, and that's not hyperbole, it's not exaggeration, it's just a mathematical fact. To anyone on TikTok, Even Frank Thomas. In a town called Manly, the men over 40 have lost their mojo. Lower T left them less strong and energetic as they once had been. All except one. He was Frank, the big hurt. He was still able to swing the lumber like when he was young. How come you're still manly? Frank said, Nugenics total T. Nugenics total T. At any rate, these common talking points influence the average person's perception of testosterone. And the ready access to testosterone supplements over the counter encourages people to go out to their local CVS and grab one for themselves. Even Nugenics is at Walgreens. But does high testosterone cause a hypermasculine alpha male mindset? Or is this a misconception of testosterone's real effects? All right, <laughs> what's the first thing you think of when you think of the word testosterone? I think of, uh... Think of men and hypermasculinity. Testosterone reminds me of masculinity. And I learned this in a biology class in high school. Um, I think of aggressive behaviors from masculinity, things like that. What is masculinity? Is it what it means to be a man? Is it a scientifically proven quality or just a social construct? There isn't a definitive answer, but people have come up with their own theories over the years. In a 1968 study by Paul Rosencrantz and colleagues, they found that college students related masculinity with traits such as aggressiveness, skill in business, and never crying. These male valued traits are typically associated with a little hormone called testosterone. This association comes from the fact that testosterone is secreted by the testes, plays a role in sexual differentiation, and does aid in masculinizing the human brain. However, testosterone isn't as manly as you think. In rodents, it is the aromatization of testosterone into estradiol, an estrogen hormone, that masculinizes the brain. But what about humans? In a 2013 study by Joel Finkelstein and colleagues, it was determined that estradiol actually has a significant effect on sexual function and performance in men. When participants of the study were administered aromatase inhibitors, which blocked the metabolization of testosterone into estradiol, sexual desire and erectile function both decreased. Moreover, in a 2019 literature review by Nicholas Russell and Matisse Grossman, their search yielded studies that found effects of estradiol on pubertal growth spurt in boys, maintenance of bone mass, and spermatogenesis. As more and more research on aromatization in the human male brain is generated, estrogen is looking just as masculine as testosterone, if not even more. We talked with Dr. Elodie DeRogier of University of Sorbonne, who has done research into the effects of testosterone and sexual behavior and reproduction. In corresponding with Dr. DeRogier, 
about her views and the misconceptions surrounding testosterone. She stated that they come from the fact that still nowadays, medical staff are trained on the concept that testosterone is needed for male gonads to develop and that in adulthood, testosterone regulates male fertility. And only gonads can secrete sex steroids, and therefore male gonads secrete testosterone, and female gonads, estradiol and progesterone, respectively. However, the adrenal gland also secretes testosterone in both sexes, and the brain has now been shown to be able to produce and secrete neurosteroids. Both testosterone and estradiol are needed in men to activate the hypothalamal pituitary gonadal axis and neuronal brain regions involved in sexual behavior. Her recent work has shown that another important molecule is important in sexual behavior and reproduction, the neuropeptide called kisspeptin. She states that kisspeptin has been shown to ameliorate sexual desire in hyposexual men and women, as well as prompting the basal secretion of GnRH and LH from the GnRH-LH pulse generator in both men and women. She believes that more work needs to be done to determine the role of testosterone and other androgens on the female brain and in sexual behavior in both sexes. The interactions between hormones and behavior are bidirectional, meaning hormones can influence behavior and behavior can influence hormone level. The misconception of testosterone is a male hormone may come from the idea that males tend to have higher level of testosterone than females. One explanation for the difference in testosterone level between the two genders is that men are more likely to engage in masculine behaviors such as wielding power that can increase testosterone, so men are more likely to have higher testosterone than women. Based on this idea, Van Anders and colleagues found that gendered behavior can influence testosterone level. First of all, here's the clarification of the difference between sex and gender. Sex is referred to as the biological characteristic based on genitals, chromosomes, and so on, while gender is more of a socially constructed idea and norm that influences how one acts in society. The researchers used wielding power as a gendered behavior. They recruited 41 participants, 26 of them were men and 15 were women. They let participants act out a monologue about firing employees at a workplace in front of two experimenters. The monologue is performed twice. Once is in a stereotypical feminine way, such as taking up little space, frequent smiles, and hesitancy, and once in a stereotypically masculine way, such as taking up space, infrequent smiles, and showing superiority. Van Anders et al. hypothesized in Hypothesis 1 that wielding power increases testosterone regardless of how the behavior is performed. In Hypothesis 2, wielding power increases testosterone only when people performed it in a masculine way rather than a feminine way. The researchers found that their experiment supported Hypothesis 1 rather than Hypothesis 2. Wielding power increases testosterone in women regardless of how it was performed. In another word, women's testosterone levels increased when participants performed the monologue in either masculine or feminine way. These findings show that stereotype behavior increases testosterone in women regardless of how it is performed, suggesting gender norms can mediate the effects of gender on testosterone. For example, by encouraging men to wield power while discouraging women from doing so. So if testosterone is not linked with manliness, what else does it do? What about looks? A 2018 study conducted a meta-analysis to look into whether global facial masculinity associates with testosterone levels using the facial width to height ratio, or the global facial masculinity index which has been associated with a vast range of behavioral traits, including dominance and aggression, and they found no such association between facial features and testosterone levels. Another stereotypic aspect of masculinity can be high social status. So is testosterone level linked with one's social status? Now as broad and vague as that sounds, there are some interesting results from animal studies. A 1977 study in monkeys injected testosterone into monkeys in the middle of the rank. 
According to the stereotypic assumption that testosterone elevates aggression, fearlessness, risk-taking and all that good old manly stuff, these monkeys should race all the way to the top of the rank, right? Well, in fact, their behavior towards the higher ranking monkeys didn't change, but instead, they were harder on those below them. In other words, being jacked with testosterone exaggerated pre-existing social patterns instead of creating new ones, aka rising to the top. There are, of course, a lot of factors at play, from the actual versus self-perceived social status and their two-way interaction, to the highly variable context within our society. Social situations are probably more complicated than deciding who gets all the food and sex in the monkey group. Duh! So, what's next? Combating misinformation can be difficult, especially when it's deeply rooted in a culture that has been around for decades. But people's minds can indeed change. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of testosterone? Oh, oh that one. I don't know. Great. So, what do you think of testosterone and its surrounding myth now? as a catalyst for not just social structure as you mentioned but we have some kind of social structure a structure that could afford certain kind of um, emotional experiences and um, testosterone are they're, they're, they're kind of amplifying that emotional experience more importantly Combating this misinformation will help vulnerable people who feel like they can't be their old selves without taking expensive supplements that aren't well regulated. On top of this, focusing on testosterone as the male exclusive hormone harms athletes who are sex tested in sports without proper research to show that this is even necessary in invading their privacy. You don't need testosterone to become more manly or attract females at the airport or grow your muscles and lift big weights. The idea that you can't be a true man and keep your wife happy without testosterone supplements and stereotypical male behaviors is a dying fad, not based on science. More and more people are expressing themselves outside of this alpha male mentality and finding joy in other kinds of expressions, like reading, writing, playing the sex. <laughs> So don't worry if you feel like a member of the city of Manly and aren't like Frank Thomas the Big Hurt. Everyone loves you just as much, if not more, than him. So, I'll ask this question one more time. What do you think of when I say the word testosterone? Bye.